Okay, so it's 6 o'clock now. Might as well get to our regularly scheduled program. As you guys know, or maybe you don't know, we'll let you know right now, we have the Smith & Wesson MNP 9C by VFC. Are you making a funny? No, that's no, the MNP 9C. 9C. Oh, I thought, we were, I thought we were making things that rhyme with C. Nope. Or B. Just being factual. Or he or ye. Anyway, so... <laughs> This is obviously a very new gun. We saw it at SHOT Show, Bob and I did. We covered it a little bit while we were there. We have the sample here now. We got a chance to fire it on full auto, fire it on semi-auto. Bob, what are your thoughts? I really like the gun itself. Um, honestly, I would actually purchase one if they had uh, the full model out right now because I really like the fact that, you know, just like the KSC G18C, you can switch to semi and to full, you know, back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, they've got all the trademarks. The gun fire, like, it's got a very crisp action, which I really like. You know, it's got rails on it. Um, the gun, uh, as I just uh, learned, is really ambidextrous. There's a slide release on either side, and you can actually change out the magazine release to go either side as well. Yes. Um, now, uh, Josh just mentioned to me that the full auto, uh, it's actually 14 rounds a second, and the gun holds 14 rounds. So if you fire it on full auto, <laughs> done. So you, you get one second. It's yeah. really cool, but you've got to be in a rough situation. <laughs> so it's, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I think the gun is too small. I'm not very partial to small guns. I mean, this gun does feel pretty tiny in my hands, and I feel like I could probably use it properly. Um, but like you, Bob, I think that I may reserve getting one. I don't think I will, actually. But if I do, it would have to be the full-size version, which is going to be released later on. Now, some of you were asking earlier about the release date of this gun. Don't know yet. Um, it's coming soon, and then the full-size version will be coming afterward. But uh, as far as build quality goes, obviously it's made by VFC. Fantastic build quality. The slide is made out of metal. The frame is made out of polymer. Which is just like the real gun. Just like the real gun. The magazine, I can't really figure it out if it's like some sort of... Model. I was trying to figure it out too. It's, it it's, feels I weird. don't know if it is or not. Because I picked it up earlier and I was thinking to myself, it, Man, I think it's metal. Like, it feels like a polymer magazine though almost. It feels polymer, but I yeah. think it's metal. Um, so, I don't think it's like a thermal, like, you know, call. Yeah, it, it just feels interesting. But uh, yeah, the magazine obviously doesn't hold a lot of rounds. The gun is very short. Um, we have not yet had a chance to test out the accuracy, but we will be able to do that. Um, the gun does fire very crisp, crispily. I agree with Bob on that, on that accord. But uh, yeah, all in all, pretty cool gun. Um, just a little too small for my taste. Yeah, I wish the full one was coming out sooner than it is. Yeah. Well, it will be coming out soon. And in fact, I, I could have sworn the one we saw at Shot Show was the M and P forty. Was it not? Or was it the 9C? Because I thought the one we saw it shot was longer than this, or bigger than this. Well, why don't we and just then when we got video? this one, that would make too much <laughs> sense. <laughs> but yeah, I thought the one that we saw it shot was the M&P 40. But anyway, I mean... Well, I believe this is slated to be released March or April, and the full version uh, is supposed to be released like late summer or early winter. That sounds about right. I think so. Andrew may have some information for us. Yes, M&P 40 trade, same size. Okay, so... The one that we saw at shot was the same size, but it was the M&P 40 version. This is the 9C. Features on it are really cool. Like you mentioned, it is very ambidextrous. It has the adjustable back straps. Um, but so, so what are the stats? Everybody wants to know. What's the FPS? Okay. Fire, Good price, call. release date. Well, Bob already mentioned it shoots 14 BBs a second. The magazine holds 14 rounds, so you're going to expend the magazine very quickly. Uh, it's going to shoot right around 270 feet per second, maybe around like 265, which, you know, is, is good for CQB. It's a workable sidearm. It's definitely not the FPS I would want right out of the box, but, you know, it's functional. Well, it, it's the FPS that you have to come to expect with a gun of this type of barrel length. That's true. So the yeah. shorter guns, like the USP Compact, the Glock 26, the uh, you know Tokimori Detonics 45 that have really short barrels, they all shoot between 250 and 280. That's a take. very good point. I didn't so think about that. So standard size pistols like the G18C, the G17, you know the Tokimori 4.3 or 5.1, those are the type of uh, gas blower pistols that shoot around 300 or above if you're lucky. But yeah, this thing shoots about 270 with 0.2 gram BBs and green gas. Now this gun is going to run around 140 dollars, um, just under at 139.90 something. I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, 
trying to think of any other <coughs> possible things I could mention about it. Uh, honestly, I'm just a big fan that it's got. I know it doesn't mean a lot to some people, but I really like having full trades on my gun. Oh, it means it's it's a and, big and thing. Not only is it full trades, but they even went the extra step and added the uh, gun can still fire if magazine is removed. Even though that's not really true. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not really true for the airsoft version. Yeah. yeah, so no, I'm actually I'm just going to show you guys but real because, quick. Yeah, that is definitely something that's on the real gun. See a little white uh, marking? You probably can't even make it out, but it does say uh, caution, capable of firing with magazine removed. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely true to the real thing. Um, Smith and Wesson. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't fired the real gun, to be honest with you, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. But uh, it's pretty neat. Pretty neat. I really just like the fact that it's new for airsoft. Like, it's another company that's making a new model gun. You know, it's not another M4 or another M9. You know, they could have gone a safe route and made another 2011, like a high cap or something like that. Yeah. But they're going for the new guns. This is the new thing that's coming out. You know, the M&P is a model gun that, you know, Smith & Wesson wanted to make compete with Glock. And... This is the airsoft representation of it. I think that's kind of neat. Yeah, I thought it was very interesting that VFC chose to make this pistol. And yeah, I, you're right. I, I do like the fact that they're not just like going with something that's already and out I there. I just kind of feel like it's a little bit odd to start out with your compact model. Like, why not? Because like for me personally, I have a little bit larger hands, and that mm -hmm. thing just I can't. I can't make it work for me. It well, just keep in mind, a lot of airsofters are between the ages of 13 and 25. They may not have the same size hands. Well, you so know, that's understandable. But I mean, I feel like the uh, you know the full version made, in my opinion, would have been maybe a better option. Uh, option to release first and then you know maybe come up with this at a later date yeah. but because if that compared to the the usp compact i feel like the usp compact has a little bit of better oh better the usp for, for sure is much it's a much larger gun yeah yeah that's i guess that's what i'm trying to say it's yeah. a larger compact yeah gun, which the is usp kind of compact awesome. is much larger in in every dimension actually the, the barrel is much larger the handle is much larger oh somebody's thing. asking can you power yeah, shot this I'm show the that. the mag feature oh yeah um well we need to load it in order to do that Yes, but you can kind of simulate it by... There is a feature in this gun uh, that is actually just like the real one, where if you load it at a certain angle, the slide will go forward automatically. It didn't do it right there, but as far as power stroke, it does power stroke. Yeah. Um, but... You can actually just hit the bottom and it'll... it'll oh, really? It'll do that? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that is a feature on the real one, uh, so they actually put that into this one. Uh, it'll save you some time. Um, I honestly really like power stroking, but... That yeah. does save you a little bit of time. It, it just takes a little bit of getting used to, to be honest with you, because if you're used to power stroking your gun or, or hitting the slide release, you might like catch yourself like, oh, oh, the gun's ready to go. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. That, that's kind of caught me off guard a little bit, even though I knew that was a feature. It still is not in my muscle memory. Someone needs to market an M250 Cal heavy machine gun for airsoft. Yes. That'd be awesome. Yes. But uh, part of this discussion, obviously VFC, very well known for making high quality AEGs and gas rifles actually they, they've made gas rifles in the past what I, what I recognize them for is their, their guns are great but just they get the externals perfect they are very well known for making very high quality externals so what we wanted to do was take a look at this gun and compare it to some of the other guns on the market so this is going to kind of turn into a high-end pistols versus budget-minded pistols discussion so that's why we have a bunch of other guns in front of us why don't you grab those Bob? So, the brands that we chose to represent for the budget pistol side is WE. Oh. We have a very flashy 1911 for the WE. And KJW, who make this SIG 226. And for the high end pistol side, we have the MNP, represented by VFC. We've got the KWA 1911 Mark I, <clears throat> and we've got the Tokyo Marui 5 and 7 Gas Blowback. Tokyo Marui, so, and just for kicks, we have my KSCG 18 c here. But this is kind of a, this has been modified, so I don't know if we should use this. Yeah, I'd rather not it's use it. It's also a very, very old gun, so. What are you doing? Wrong box. Okay. <laughs> That's the KWA stuff, is it Tokyo Marui? Oh, uh, okay. So. Um, WE Pistols. This 1911, I happen to know off the top of my head, costs about like $89 right now. The KJW Pistols in general are a little more expensive, usually in the neighborhood of $100 to $125, give or take. KWA Pistols, depending on which one you are after, is usually in the neighborhood of $130 to even above $200 for, I think, some of their uh, licensed HK, the MK23, I think. Okay. 
I think I thought they were like 180, 180. Can you check on that? The uh, KWA Mark 23, how much does that cost? I think that's a, over a $200 pistol. Tokyo Marui, obviously, because it's made in Japan. Okay. We're talking about money from uh, Yes, I actually don't know how much this pistol is. Tokyo Marui 5 and 7? That's definitely a $200 or something pistol. Hang on a second, I need to kick somebody because they do not understand the logic behind please do not spam with caps. So do not spam with caps! One Tim second. Better. One, two, three. Um, <clears throat> what was the question? TM. Tokyo Marui 5 and 7. What is the cost on that? 178, just checked. Boom. Dark Jester. There you go. Is he correct? Sounds about right. We need to move this camera a little lower for Block TV. Which one is it? Mm, it's that one. This one? This one? Yes. Yeah, that one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh it's too low. low. Too low. Too low. You have low. Too low. Okay. All right. I moved it down a little bit for you guys, so you can actually see the desk uh, just a tad, uh, so you guys can see what they're talking about. Yes. So I have the WE1911 in front of me. This is a very popular gun. We sell a lot of these. Yeah. Uh, here. <laughs> just checking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, what I'm basically looking at right now is a full metal 1911, absolutely no trademarks, shoots in the neighborhood of about 300 FPS or so, this is a single stack magazine that holds about 14 rounds. Um, it's actually, actually offered in numerous, you know, colors and finishes and stuff like that. Um, this is kind of like your just get the job done type of airsoft gun. Yeah, but it, the finish is pretty good though. On this particular one, yeah, there are other models that I don't particularly like as far as looks goes, but, I mean, you're spending less than $100. The gun is realistically weighted, um, but lacks a lot of realism in the fact that it's completely sterile. It doesn't, I mean, it says 45 ACP on it, but you're not going to get a licensed gun at all. It's not going to say... Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's, it's got a heft to it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely not a lot of that bells and whistles, but as far as functionality, I mean, it's basically everything you really need, so. It's the job done. How much yes. is this Sig Sauer 226? This is always, I was really kind of disappointed that I, I don't shoot this gun very well. I just couldn't get used uh, to the what? trigger. As far as the real gun, I believe good, it's 100, like either 120, features. who makes that gun? Uh, KGW. Uh, I got cyber gun guns. Yeah, it's cyber gun. Oh, uh, 128 to 120. Okay, so you're looking at about under $130. This gun is made by KGW, which is made in Taiwan. They are still kind of considered one of the more budget-minded airsoft pistol manufacturers. This particular model happens to be officially licensed through Cybergun, so it has the Six Hour logos on it. Um, Function-wise and everything like that, the gun works just like the real gun does. Your slide release is right here. The decocker that's on the side works right here. It has a double-action trigger. Um, but again, this is still kind of like considered your your budget-minded gun. It is. It's on a higher end, I would say, of the budget-minded people. It so. definitely is. Okay, it does cost a little bit more than your standard WE. It has the full trademarks. It's made out of the realistic materials. But I think, in my mind, one of the things that kind of separates the affordable guns from the the high-end guns is the upgradability. Hmm. Because uh, the thing that really separates these guns apart from each other is the fact that. There aren't really upgrades made for these guns. No. Not a lot of customization There's, that you can do with those as well either. Yeah, I mean, unless you're kind of a machinist or you make your own stuff, or you take stuff that's made for the Maruis, because that's pretty much the gold standard for airsoft upgrade parts, and retrofit it to a WE, you can do that. But then, I know guys that have done that, you start running into problems where the build material isn't strong enough to handle. <laughs> something like that. So I know that in the past, the WE-1911 specifically, I've had some issues um, with these parts up here not working properly and your <laughs> slides fly off after you're shooting them. Mm. Um, somebody, somebody asked a question that maybe a lot of people kind of don't understand. It's mm -hmm. a pistol. What do you need to upgrade it for? And some there's a lot like of answers for that. Stuff. There's a lot of answers for that. I mean, you can do competition shooting pistols. You can mm -hmm. do a different slide like you have in your Glock just to make it look unique for you personally. Uh, then there's people who love upgrades. You go to a TM kind of gun, you can upgrade the hell out of that thing yes. and put all kinds of stuff in there to make it shoot further, better gas efficiency. So yeah. there are many different reasons why you would want to do different upgrades. Uh, most of the time, it's just for aesthetics and personal looks for you personally. If you want to tech and stuff like that, there's the guns that we get up further into in this conversation will give you better ideas. I think one of the main things, too, that people upgrade their pistols for is to make them shoot farther because... Yeah. 
the further they shoot, the more usable they're going to be in an airsoft game. Now, generally speaking, you're only going to use your pistol, you know, in a closer environment. But what's to say that you can't hit somebody even further out? Why wouldn't you want to be able to do that? At Attack City Pistol Line, there's a couple of long distance parts where you can totally engage somebody. At a, yeah, a and if you have a pistol, long range yeah. accurate pistol, you can compete at that range as where other players cannot. I've taken out my uh, KWA, KWA ATP to, uh, what was that? The game that they had, a oh, Route 66. We're at mm -hmm. Route 66, and I shot someone from all the way across the field, and I have, I have a little uh, video cap of it where I just was like, oh, I think I see a guy. Plop. Hit. I was like, oh! Just, you can hit people from far away. I mean, it sucks to have to lob it, but, I mean, if, you, if you're good enough with a gun, you know it well enough, you can hit people from pretty darn far away. Mm -hmm. With, I have a Bakersfield accent. <laughs> Is that such a thing? I didn't know there was a Bakersfield accent. Two okay. pair of pants will set me right for quite some time. Okay. <laughs> I, I did say that. It felt right to say. It, it was right. Do you need it. more pants? No, two pair of pants will set me right for quite a while. Quite some time. Quite said. some time. <laughs> Even Jane Step actually like, Bob, did you just like Bakersfield me out? <laughs> Bakersfield and your mom? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, back to the pistols. Um, so that's, in my opinion, what separates, you know, the high-end guns from the low-end guns is really the ability to upgrade them. <laughs> See, um, I personally, I mean, you you have the ability to upgrade uh, the higher-end higher guns, but I personally like having gas bullets because I really don't need to touch the internals on right out of the box. Yeah. You don't really, I mean... Theoretically, you won't need to touch up on any of the internals as long as it works. I mean, you know, even the KJWs and the WEs, they're going to work right out of the box. Absolutely. The key thing that I think people want to know is, like, the longevity. And that's really what you pay for when you're buying a higher-end gun. Because, like, the metals that these are made out of, I can't really speak to what it is. probably has a lot of zinc in it. Zinc is not very strong. Um, usually the higher end pistols are made with more aluminum alloy content and so it's going to be more reliable, it's going to be stronger, it's going to last a lot longer and that's really the key thing about you know your airsoft investments and a lot of people ask us what or you know is KWA, is VFC overpriced like so and so like no not really I mean they spent the time and energy to engineer the guns and they use high quality materials to make sure that the gun's going to last you um, and so in my opinion it's none of it's overpriced. Hmm. Touche. Although this is capitalism, you know, in America, so it's worth only as much as somebody's willing to pay for it. Correct. As long as there's a market. Um, okay, so uh, what, was, what was the price on this 5 and 7 again? Did you refer About 180. About 180. Uh, this gun is around, uh, did we say that, 140, 150? I'm not sure. The KWA Mark 1, does anyone know how much that is? Mark, do you know? Mark. 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 I'm looking up at this laptop's a little slow to do stuff and I'm streaming. Uh, 160, somebody says. 160, the Mark 1, 164. Um, 164.95 sounds about right. Well, I can personally say I've been on the other end of this gun, and I've shot it a few times. Uh, very effective, rather accurate, um, even though it's made out of polymer, like I believe just about all Tokimori guns just are. A, just about all of them. Um, it's a very good gun. Um, I mean, keep, keep in mind, though, Bob, we're not talking about those guns specifically. We're talking about really Tokimori the totality of the Tokyo Marui guns. Like, all of their guns are going to be mostly plastic. All of them are extremely accurate for pistols. Absolutely, and, think, and they're highly upgradable, like you said. Yeah, yeah. TM kind of sets the benchmark for, I think, accuracy out of the box. Really? In my opinion. Dude, TM, especially the the 5.1, is so accurate. This, that's the thing, I've never fired the 5.1, and you always tell me you regret selling yours. Yeah, but, I mean, ask anybody who's... Okay, Daniel, for sure, who's done a little bit of modifications to the 5.1. Didn't really need to improve the accuracy, but it definitely did. I think if you talk to 5.1 owners, you will find that unanimously they will tell you that that gun is extremely accurate right out of the box. I, I find a lot of people, you know, so many people were posting on this a little bit earlier saying, you know, <clears throat> well, yeah, TM is really great guns, but they're they're plastic. Like, I don't want a plastic gun. In my personal opinion, if I was going to run a sidearm, it would be a TM for two reasons. It is light. It is accurate. What else do you need? That's all you need. If you have a gun that shoots, it's light and mm -hmm. accurate. You're encompassing I don't know. Levels. I just feel more badass with a metal, like, 1911-style pistol in my hand. That's, I mean... I'm not saying I don't metal need it. 19... I have it on my desk to play around with. It's I like, mean, we, we have two different philosophies. Like, you care about how things, like, how heavy things are. I don't care how heavy things and, are. And who pukes more? Bob does. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, <laughs> right, correct. I puke and continue on. But, I mean, you have, you have a very specific philosophy of, like, your entire gear setup is meant for, like... You know, speed. low weight, high speed, high speed, yeah. low drag. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, I think you accomplish it very well. But um, on the other hand, just don't have fun. So. In the same vein that Josh is mentioning, plastic guns. When I played at Lion Claw Nine, plastic M16A4. When I was at Irene. Wait, wait, wait! You didn't play at Lion Claw Nine. 
much? Yeah. Oh, with the red hat? Yeah. I was filming for the beginning portion of it. And oh, that's right. That's when the armor thing happened. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I was using a plastic M16A4. Uh, when we were at Irene, I was using a G&G built plastic body DMR. Mm -hmm. um, that gun fired very well. Yeah, at Route 66. Yeah, Route 66, the scar is half plastic, half aluminum. Like, it pays definitely to have a oh, lightweight gun. That's why I'm buying a scar as my next field gun, because it's not as heavy. It's I was thinking about the ACR, and I was like, uh... The SSR good. is pretty damn heavy. The SSR? No, I said not. scar. I said scar. Isn't that... Was it the scar, the scar SSR? The scar is an SSR, but the, well, the SSR is not as heavy as some of the DMRs. Like, oh, it has, not compared not. to an SR-25... Like 12 inch rail on that thing? Dude, that's yeah. going to be so heavy. Compared, no, I just mean that the, the SSR, SSR I had in the office was like pretty, pretty like front heavy. It's got some heft to it, but I'm talking about scar for a field gun, because yeah. it's light, and like, mm -hmm. you don't need anything. That's, I mean, it's, that's what I use with Irene. It worked out very yeah, well. You grab a scar on optic, and you're ready to go. Like that's all you need. Mm -hmm. I definitely had to get one heck of a of an optic riser just to get that in front of my. my it, yeah, my I will scan. say that the 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 adjustment for the pads is not exactly perfect, but you know. Well, no, I can't even use the cheek pad because I have a face mask on. That yeah, that yeah. would be a problem for sure. So. But I mean, optics are kind of. I don't really need optics for airsoft. They, it, at line claw, it's very useful. I would, yeah, just, I would just for saying for spotting. For spotting, yes, exactly. I use my optics a lot at Milsim games for spotting. I don't actually use them to aim them. Well, I use I use the red dots. I'll try and zero them in before, but I zero them in at, I believe, like 100 feet or sometimes like 150 feet, mm -hmm. just like the max range I think I can get. And mm -hmm. then that way I know. You know, I know close up where it's going to go, but further away I can just, you know, rely on the red dot. The M1 mm -hmm. Grand is in my hand. Someone's asking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll get there. We'll get there. we got lots of time, boys. Yeah. So yeah, hmm. I think that's pretty much going to do it for a pistol discussion. That's all we really kind of want to touch on. Unless there's something more you want to say about. Um, not much. I mean, I I have this gun. I like the uh, the five and seven. Do we sell this? Yes. Okay. Uh, you grab a stock on them right now. That's just the full display. That's our full display model. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, I've never actually I've never actually owned a KJW. And that one on my desk, a KJW, but we never fired it. Mm. But it feels so crisp. When you I had. It, this was a long time ago. I had a KJW M9 years ago, many, many years ago. Um, and this was like way back in the day when KJW stuff was awful. They've really improved a lot over the years and made some good quality guns. But uh, the KJW M9 that I had was actually used in that John Woo film that we oh, with Adrian. Yeah. With the doves? With the doves, yeah. yeah. That, uh, that was a pretty good film. Yeah, because the, the, the cop, the good guy, approaches the house with two M9s. One of those, those are both my guns, actually. One was a KSC M9, and uh, one was a KJW M9. So They make good, they make good movie props, but uh, that particular gun had some serious engineering issues that yeah. <laughs> prevented it from being a good, a good uh, airsoft pistol. But uh, they've definitely improved over the years. However, like Josh mentioned, it's kind of on the higher end of the budget side. They don't, haven't really broken into that high quality I don't know what, market. After, after having opinion, that one on my desk, I feel like I want to. I want to kind of get one. That nineteen eleven? Yeah. That's a W E. Oh, that's a Wii? Oh. Yeah, that's not a KJW. Oh, okay. I uh, thought it was Wii for some reason. No. I do want to mention someone. Someone said this earlier on the Ustream, stream. Um, how cool it would be to like, you know, pwn some people with Derringer. I have actually used one of those Derringer pistols in airsoft before. Mm -hmm. They're actually really entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, we were doing a convoy mission, and the the truck got stopped because someone put some wood in front of the, I guess, the trail we are going on, mm -hmm. and I got out, which is stupid because I almost got shot immediately. My shotgun uh, shotgun went down because I forgot any ammo for it. My pistol didn't have gas in it, but I had the Derringer. That's what and I thought. It is a KJW, Tim. KJW 1911? On yeah. your desk? The one that's on my desk. The one that we play around with all the time. That's KJW. Oh. Is that the CO2 version? No. So, anyways, we'll talk about this M1 now. <laughs> Just kidding. Continue with your story, Bob. No, it's okay. It's fine. No, well, we want to hear, I want to hear your Derringer story. I just had to Andrew, to Andrew's about. giving us a, a good point to talk about. Another difference that you're going to see between high-end guns and affordable guns is that KJW, although they make their guns out of realistic materials, and this particular one happens to be licensed with the real gun trademarks on it, they don't really build their guns to spec. And so if you... I don't know if this particular one is a good example, but I think that where Andrew's trying to go with this, if you try to put your gun inside of a holster that's made for a real gun, and it's not made to spec because the airsoft company chose not to do it that way, it's probably not going to fit. It's going to run into some issues. Also, I've run into issues not with pistols specifically, but some of the more affordable rail systems out there where accessories don't fit on them because the rail size is not to spec. Mm, that's frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. Yeah. 
We almost had an issue with that on the G3 challenge, didn't we, with the, the light not fitting on that, that rail? Yeah, I just switched the rails around so the light would fit because I was yeah. not happy about having to ixnay something on my build list. So exactly. mm -hmm. it would not have been Well, fun. luckily you got it to fit, but I remember, actually, my M900, my Surefire M900, when I first got it, um, had the arms lever mount on it. That, that, that light, for those of you that know, comes in a couple of different options. But I ended up having to trade Gene my arms mount for the thumb screw mount because the rail I had on my gun at the time, it wouldn't fit on there because it wasn't to spec. Hmm. Yeah, it was very interesting. I mean, those the tolerances for the metal work of stuff like that has to be really exact. If you're off by a little bit, then your accessories won't work. It's going to cause a huge, huge headache. Hmm. So that's another big difference between these type of guns and those type of guns. The VFC, I'm sure, because they're such sticklers for attention, they're going to have their stuff made to spec. And we've actually put this thing inside of a G-code holster that's made for an M&P. Yeah. Fits flawlessly. Yeah, it does fit very well. Right? Token rear guns, for sure. The rails are going to be to spec if you wanted to put like a flashlight on that 5.7. And KWA, I know for sure because I have a Mark II pistol that flashlights such as Surefire and True, or not True Spec, Surefire and Streamlight work on them for sure. This is actually, it's really hard to get um, light on and off this thing. Yes, I was, <laughs> was going to mention that earlier. Once you get a light on there, you better be you better pretty, pretty happy with yeah. it. So. I, I don't. I, I actually used to have a Streamlight M3 that I used to put on there, and I do remember it being very difficult to get off. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hungry. <laughs> um, I, you should have taken that sandwich earlier. Yeah. It's still sitting there. Yeah. Um, someone asked uh, if I could, would I get the Ares uh, MS338? Yes, I would love to have one and use one. Um, I actually did get a GMG G96 gas sniper rifle, which I'm looking forward to using somewhere in particular. I'm not sure which field would be good to use it at, though. Which one? Uh, the GMG G96. How hard, how hard does it shoot? Uh, it shoots about 540. Can you use that online class? Do they allow that? I believe the limit is 500 for a semi automatic sniper rifle, uh, 550 for bolt action. And it uses bolt action. So yeah. you can use it at line club. Yeah, I believe so. That'd be awesome. What? Actually, the rules state uh, you can use if it shoots. If you're trying to go for a, either a sniper or a squad, not squad support, but a DMR, uh, as long as it shoots uh, around 500 FPS, I believe, with a semi only, you're good to go. So whatever gun shoots 500 with a semi only can't go full auto without totally taking the gear oh, really? apart. So you're bolt action doesn't even matter. Then. It doesn't even matter. Yeah. So if you want to use that, you can. But I mean, you know, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. I think we're good to go with the pistols now. I think we will move on to discussing the M1 Garand. Is it Garand or Garand? M1 Garand. Garand. Is there a D at the end of it? Garand? Yep. There is a D. Defense. I am so hungry right now. Don't we just go get you some food? No. I want to eat in front of my guests. What was this, uh, what was this that original before? chamber then? Was it 308? I don't know. Uh, can you hand me the box for the TM back? Does anybody want to tell me what the M1 was originally chambered in? I thought it was like 30 out 6. 30 out 6? Have the new ones been converted to 308? Uh, I don't know that. Bang, bang. This thing smells. 30 out 6? Is it the new one? Like, I swear I've seen 308 versions of this somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I was looking at something else though. Yeah, it's an M14. M14? Is that what it is? I need to learn more about my World War II guns. I really don't know much about World War II guns, to be honest with you. So, this is the M1 Garand. Garand. Garande. Garand. Just, just stop. Just, just say <laughs> M1. This is the M1 from ICS. Originally manufactured, I think, by Springfield? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Did Springfield make the M1 Grand? Uh, I feel stupid for not knowing this because I've seen a lot of programs on the M1 Grand itself. I but it's Springfield. I know Springfield makes the M14. Oh, People are saying yes, Springfield, yes. Yeah, it says Springfield Armory right there. Oh, I didn't see that. I knew. But uh, yeah, so this is an AEG version of the M1 Grand. It is on pre order right now on our website if you're interested in it. Uh, shoots six millimeter BBs. The magazine, I believe, holds thirty-ish rounds. Uh, it's, it says it holds forty-five, and it holds more realistically between thirty-eight and forty-two. Okay, so thirty-ish, forty-ish rounds. 
Um, it is a magazine, not a clip, which is what the original M1 okay. had. Okay, yeah, the original used a clip, but this one uses a magazine, Yeah. which... There is a difference. Yeah, there's a huge difference. Yes. Huge difference. Uh, this is made out of real wood, and actually smells like real wood, too. And it does, metal. It smells, yeah, it smells really good. Um, I actually feel like sap is being stuck to my fingers yeah. that is emitting from this. That's how fresh the wood is. Freshly been cut. But yeah, uh, pretty neat gun overall. I know that this type of gun is going to appeal a lot to reenactors or World War II type airsofters. I've seen a couple of you guys out there, you World War II airsofters. Um, not really my cup of tea, to be honest with you, but hey, more power to you. Um, it's actually really interesting to see like somebody in a World War II get up in the midst of like a bunch of tactical guys with like modern weaponry. <laughs> I see a lot of guys with the old style uh, steel pot helmet and mm -hmm. with like uh, uh, with a Thompson submachine gun. Yeah, that's what I see a lot. Yeah, yeah definitely. I always wondered what the reason for wearing that helmet was because it's for every World War II film I've seen, the bullets just fly right through that. It's mostly, thing. mostly for shrapnel. Oh, shrapnel. Okay. Yeah. It kind of, it's kind of glancing shots too, as well, right? Is that kind of the? Idea uh, I don't too? really know if it stopped. I don't think it stopped a glancing shot. Okay. Um, it's for shrapnel. I know in World War One they even had like leather helmets, and one of the like the Prussians had the helmets with the spike on top. They could use as an improvised close combat weapon. Oh wow! Hey man, the headbutt don't knock it. I think you're supposed to take it off. And... Well, you know, yeah. we all have different ideas. Going back to the M1. Andrew says John C. Garan worked for Springfield at the time when he first came up with this design. Fun fact, he built the machine which made the M1 Grand. Wow. What a Interesting. Smart, what a smart machine. Man. Interesting. But yeah, okay, obviously the M1 Grand is a semi-automatic repeating rifle. There's no full auto option on this gun. Um, build material and quality is superb, ICS. Not a very like highly talked about company in Airsoft anymore, even they though be, yeah. they were definitely one of the bigger players back in the day for making high quality, you know, uh, airsoft guns. This is no exception. This is definitely a high quality airsoft gun and the price reflects that. I believe it's for pre-order right now on our website for $400. Uh, Dark Jester's asking about the FPS. I didn't chrono this thing, did you? Oh. I know Mark. Mark, did you chrono this thing? What is this gun shoot at? Actually, I think this is <laughs> just about 350. I thought it was like 360. Mm. Um, Actually, 360 some... to 370 FPS according to Mark with the .20 gram BB. Someone did mention that those, uh, uh, they mentioned something in Banner Brothers, but those helmets from War II will actually stop bullets if hit in the right, right mm. area. Or the wrong area. <laughs> Occasionally it works. Well, it's just, that's, that's what I want to know from my There's one guy in the series, yeah, that survived a <laughs> bullet wound to hit. Occasionally <laughs> it works, but... Yes, somebody asked, so no ping then. No, there's no ping. This, is, this gun is magazine-fed, not clip-fed. If you want a more realistic version of the M1 Grand that you can't really use at a lot of airsoft fields, Marushin, Japanese company, makes a full metal, real wood M1 Garand with an 8 round clip. Oh, they're going to say 8 millimeter BB. And 8 millimeter BBs. It shoots like 440 with 8 mm BBs. So Which is it a shoots lot. really, really hard. That's like 2.5, almost 3 joules of energy. Um, but yeah, that gun actually does have a clip that ejects the last, you know, after you shoot the last round, that it's actually a really cool gun. But uh, this is definitely a more economic more player friendly version. It's battery powered so you have a rechargeable power source. Um, nothing flies out so you don't have to worry about picking up your clip after it ejects out of the gun or anything like that. The magazine is kind of realistic-ish. I mean it's not realistic but it's it's doable for a game. You know mid caps for M4s or AKs are generally between the 30, 30 and 100 and something round capacity. Yeah usually 30 and 150 rounds yeah. So you've got 40 rounds in here. My LM4 only holds 40 rounds so does yours. Um, so it, it's right on there with some of the other standard gas gun magazines out there. Uh, the battery for this is actually going to go in the stock. Uh, there is real, really no mount for a scope on here. So, was there a scopes mounted on the original grands? No, as far, as far as I know, that they would use the Springfield bolt action as a sniping gun or a sniper rifle, and they would use this as a main infantry rifle. Okay. Does anybody know what the rifle that was used by the sniper in Saving Private Ryan was? No, no. Oh, I oh, apologize. Wait, wait. Uh, I believe Saving that, Private Ryan. I believe that was a Springfield 1903. Springfield 1903. That's the bolt action I was talking about. So 19, 1908. 1908. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to look it up. I, I know it's a Springfield rifle. Are you talking about the guy that's in the tower? At four? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, I was thinking of a different movie. Um, well, yeah, you can't shoot tanks with rifles. It doesn't work that well. Um, <laughs> the guy that got shot by the oh, tank. Oh, right. He was like, 
I don't even remember. Uh, what yeah, year it, it was either a 1908 or a 1903. I think it was probably 1903. Um, just because everyone was saying that, but. I don't know, but man, Springfield's all over the damn place there. The 1908 or 1903, you got this thing. The only guy I own is Springfield. Huh? The only guy I own is Springfield. Springfield XD? Yeah. yeah. What's funny <laughs> to me is that all the guns that Springfield made during that, that time period are still widely used around the world. Oh, man. That's and right. the fact is, like, what's the most recent gun, the XD? I haven't seen anything else. Have they made anything in the past 80 years besides the XD? I do. I feel like they have. I feel like they have, but I, I haven't personally heard well, of anything. You got a computer right there. No, Bob. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, Springfield, definitely all over World War II. This is definitely something you need to add to your repertoire. So just a quick couple of questions. Buff. Someone's asking, can you put a scope on it? We already know the answer no. to that. No, you cannot. Another person asked, is there a bayonet? There's a bayonet mount. 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 Yes, there's a log right here. Okay, so you can attach a bayonet to if you have one. Bonetta's people. We would not suggest doing that for airsoft purposes. Um, right. I mean, not a real one. Um, no, it there also are airsoft bayonets. There are airsoft bayonets, which I don't believe will attach this because those are made for the M16 bayonet lug. Yes. Oh, I, yeah. yeah, yeah I've, I've used about. it before, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, on my M16. Um, this also has a stack swivel, which I didn't know what this was before I look, looked it up online. Uh, but apparently in the field, if you want to stack these guns together, uh, use a stack swivel and you can have three M1 grands standing up like a TP so they don't lay down on the ground and get, you know, gun good action. So. Right. Hmm. Stack swivel. That's neat. I had never heard of that before. Uh, there is no blowback. This is an AEG. Yeah, it's an AEG. It does have, as many other AEGs do, a functioning bolt. This is how you access the hop-up. The hop-up is right here. It's a big wheel, very easy to adjust, very user-friendly. What is, or what would be the bolt catch or release on this gun is actually the button to release the magazine. There we go. Mm -hmm. Magazine pops out right there. Like we said, this is a magazine-fed gun, so... And how many rounds does this thing hold, anyways? Bob answered that around 40-ish. 40-ish? Yeah, about 38 to 42. Okay. I mean, it says 45, but I couldn't get 45 to fit in there. Uh -huh. so. People want to hear the bolt. Let's turn the volume down a little bit. That's still pinged at the very top of our volume meter. But yeah. But it sounded cool. It sounded pretty neat. So really can't translate that type of stuff to I, don't know, I guess if you're in a walk-in store and try it out, you yeah. can understand. So boom, 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 boom. Really cool looking gun, feels great. Feels good. Not too heavy. If I had to guess, I'd say it's about eight-ish, nine-ish pounds. I don't know what the real one weighs. Uh, this is eight and a half pounds. The okay. real one uh, weighs between nine and eleven and a half pounds, based on the density of the wood. Mm -hmm. Now, does anybody know? I'm sure the the audience does. When the M1 Garand was replaced by the M14? I believe they were they used the M1 Garand uh, all the way almost up until the beginning of the Vietnam War. I heard I some marine units. people were using it still. Yeah, yeah, some marine units were still issued this, and then you know. The army got the army got the M14, and then so on to the AR or you know the M16. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Very yeah, cool. so, these were definitely in use in Korea quite yeah. a bit. Huge piece of uh, you know airsoft his American history, I guess you could say. Um, history, there so. are more versions of this gun coming out in the near future, so stay tuned to that. But for right now, we have the ICS version available for pre-order. It should be here very very soon. So check that out on our website. We don't really have any other scheduled topics other than this. Well, why don't we just we take do questions and answer, or we can talk about our G3 gun Josh, challenge. Josh, you want to take your long wood back? Uh, yes, wood. no problem. Take that back. Do you want to talk about the G3 gun challenge? Uh, you'll want to check your oh, yeah. IM. Check your IM, Tim. Oh, I am. Uh, the Marushan is a castle back, correct? The 8 mil one? The scoped sniper version of the M1 was used in the Korean War, I believe, and it is mounted slightly to the left because the clip flies straight up. Makes sense. So the scope has to be mounted slightly off to the left. Clip flies straight up. So, Andrew has, I hope he's researched this before he told us. <laughs> I assume he has. He, has. Uh, he knows a little bit about guns. Scott Badgero, uh, he was what you were wondering uh, if I had any advice on holding your Nerf mace to your vest. Um, we actually sell uh, I believe they're like Condor Tactical Shotgun Scabbards. Uh, it comes with a sling, and it also has uh, molly on there, so you can molly directly to your vest. Uh, and that's what I actually use on my plate carrier. I just put it on the bag next to my hydration carrier, um, and I can actually sling my axe in there and take it out really easily. And on the off chance I want to also have a shotgun on there, I put on another shotgun scabbard, and I carry a shotgun and axe. So, highly suggest that. Sir Death, the M14 is not made by Winchester. It's definitely a Springfield made gun. I don't know much about guns, but I know that. Springfield makes the M14. Right, guys? 
Hmm? <laughs> I wouldn't pay attention. I don't know. They might. Know. I mean, have we ever played Airsoft in South Carolina? No. Negative. I want to. That would be cool, though. We should do like a 50 states tour or something. Oh, I've always wanted states. to see all 50 states. Yeah, yeah, Except for Oregon. States. What's wrong with Oregon? I'm just kidding. No, I don't know. I just, I've had some cops in Oregon that were really mean to me. They really hate California drivers up there. I hate California drivers, man. Especially in the rain. Oh, they yeah, around here. Worst. Yeah. <laughs> You'd think they'd be best. And they're, they're Asian around here. That's the worst. Part. That's they're just Asian in our, that's in our rain. local area. Yes, though. but it makes a difference because that's where I drive, in our local area. Yeah. You got Southern California drivers are bad. They're really bad in the rain. And we happen to live where a bunch of Asian people drive. So it's like a trifecta of awful driving. That area where Sam Lewis is probably well, the episode. Basically, if it rains in Walnut, Tokyo Drift is happening. <laughs> <laughs> so. wait, wait, but there's uh, no... Oh, I'm the, guy, I'm the white guy. All right, yeah. All right, sweet. You can be Vin Diesel. I'll be the white guy from Tokyo Drift. Tokyo Diesel Mario. Was in, he was in that movie. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. Was he? He, was was in last he did a cameo. Oh, okay. All right, well. I was bummed they didn't have Vin Diesel in that one. Actually, he wasn't in the second one, was he? Man. I don't hate Oregon. It just... The Oregon cops were suspiciously not nice to me once they saw my California driver's license. That kind of put me <laughs> off. They're like, oh, how are you doing? All right, uh, I'm sorry, sir, but I'm going to see if you take it. <laughs> it was like immediately like, oh, man. Yeah. So. People are asking us about the G3 gun game. I think we'll just wait until that video goes live. Cause we can talk about it on Thursday. Yeah, we'll talk about it on Thursday. Because mm. that was actually a pretty cool project that we did. And, uh, yeah. So for the next 14 minutes, we'll talk about We'll talk awesome about other whatever things. we want. Fast 6 is a topic of discussion in the chat. Oh man! I can't wait those are, for that movie. Those are the best movies ever made. My inner, the my inner racer is, is going crazy. You can't even understand. Uh oh, our bastard program kicked Ryan Pankratz out. Really? Really? That's kind of funny. Who is uh, is Ryan Pankratz uh, under the name of starts with a V? Mr. Baracus? No, that's his name. And is he on UStream? Because if he's on UStream by a different name, I did I did remove somebody from that chat for saying some things that I thought were. A little degrading to me, mm -hmm. personally. So My pleasure, good. Karate Kid. Those are pretty sweet winter picks. Karate Kid. Oh, that makes sense. What? Why? Well, I, I just thought it was Karate Kid, but what you said makes more sense. Karate Kid? Yeah, it's spelled C-R-O-T-T-Y. Oh, Karate Kid. Yeah. Maybe it was Karate, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just heard you say Karate, and I thought you said Karate. I know, but... but karate. 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 Is it actually pronounced that way? Karate? I don't know, Double Dog. Maybe like ten times. I'm getting a VFC yeah, scar so. for everybody in chat who's asking me what scar I'm getting. It's made by VFCs. Mm -hmm. Karate Kid. Oh, Karate. <laughs> what, are, what are you supposed to wear? Uh, you can wear civilian clothing. Uh, you can wear costumes. I know there may possibly be some folks showing up in... Pikachu onesies, a penguin outfit, or the Power Rangers like last time. Uh, you can also wear uh, any tan camouflage, like let's say three color desert, six color desert, which is also called chocolate chip for some reason. Um, there's also desert digitals, desert uh, ATAX, uh, tan. Um, it actually doesn't matter what color your gear is, it, you just have to wear that specific either uh, tan camo scheme or civilian clothes or mix of both. So, If you do decide to get a little crazy, uh, loincloth is the minimum. We did have a guy who's wearing uh, shorts, face mask, and bow tie. And he's a great, oh, and shoes. He's a great player. So yeah, he's pretty he was ballsy. That's for sure. <laughs> Wear a mankey. I think we should just sit here in silence for the next fourteen minutes. We kind of have banana. <laughs> Is ACU okay for Bob's team? No. Josh. Sadly, uh, we had to decide which team to put ACU on. Uh, Tim and I both liked to put that on his team. Uh, I, I think it looks a bit too green, so we had to go one way or the other. So you got Multicam and ACU on your team. Multicam, ACU, Solid OD, Woodland, Foliage ATAX. Yes. Now you can wear black tactical gear, but you yes. cannot wear black BDUs. Yeah, no black clothes. BDUs, but black tactical gear is okay. Is a plain tan hoodie with jeans good for Bob's teams? Absolutely. Um, I'll probably be wearing just like khaki pants uh, and a black airsoft GI polo along with all the rest of my gear. Um, you get to wear a black shirt. Oh, that's true. I'll have to wear something else then. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just like wearing that the GI polo because it's like really comfortable. Is this Sect polo? You borrow my tan. Yeah. Well. I have that same polo and tan if you want to borrow it. Mm -hmm. Set my bags. I need to get my ATAC pants back for me. Yeah. 
guy's lips together? How do you not have this I thought, Yeah, it's how to give back to you already. I don't think so. Uh, it was probably in the ground. Just well, hmm. acquire it from the living room. I know. I just he wasn't there last perfect. night, and I forgot to ask him the other day. So. Mm. Uh, oh man. So I feel like today has just been a, been a bit of a weird day. Today is a weird day. Yeah. I've been up since 5 a.m. How is why were you up at 5 a.m.? I started school today. Oh really? Yeah. Wait, I, I thought you couldn't get into Fulton like halfway through the semester. The semester started. Oh really? Just now? Yeah. After oh. after winter intersection it starts the spring. So semester. you you go to the Cal State Fullerton campus? Yeah, that's that's where the school is. Bob. At which at which time? At seven a.m. Okay, so if you guys are looking for Tim Sargent, you can go to Cal State Fullerton <laughs> at seven a.m. on which days? Tuesday, Thursday. Is it Monday, Wednesday, and you're just saying that, or? Tuesday, oh, Thursday. Tuesday, today, Bob. <laughs> okay. and then, oh, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> look for the red BMW. <laughs> yeah. Look for the red BMW. Yeah, look for the red BMW. And someone who has their nose like this. <laughs> and he may drive up with his hand slightly outside of the car, which, with Bob, the glove will now, on. Which, which Bob will now demonstrate. I don't have the glove on in the red so. BMW because <laughs> I don't have a suede steering wheel. <laughs> All right, guys, i got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that was too funny to watch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was quite funny. How's my puke bag working? Uh, I actually haven't puked during airsoft in quite a while, uh, probably about like six to eight months, so I haven't really... You, you would have to have played airsoft during that time frame to not throw up, right? Oh, don't even go there. <laughs> I have played airsoft quite a bit, but uh, um, actually I was surprised. Uh, the team therapist for uh, not playing a lot of close quarters battle, like they did really well at Taxi South when I went with them oh, recently. Really? Yeah. That one game that you showed up for Rise really well, they, they That's because you taught them how to play after owning them so badly at Lion Claw 10. Oh, yeah, we did We did get them pretty good. We taught them how to freaking infiltrate a house. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. We, we taught them the hard way. Yeah, exactly. It's funny because uh, later on that day, I, when I ran around this corner, like just to go knife people with a pistol, mm -hmm. and there was 30 people there, I knifed their squad leader. That was a team therapist. Oh, really? Yeah, Gibby was right there. He was like, hey, Bob. I was like, hey, I'm dead. <laughs> But I, got I wish we could have had an aerial view of our assault on the house because I really think that even though we don't play together very often anymore, we still have pretty good team tactics. We we did incredibly well. I mean, we had and the Jason Burgess who was with us, kind of like caught on really quickly. Yeah, he was the base of fire, which got us up to the house. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're like Bob, go in. You took the windows along with D-Day. Mm -hmm. I went in, and we. But the cool thing was too is that the the house was like this. David was covering, you know, my perpendicular. You went inside. There were two windows on this yeah, side. Yeah, we had of the a house. crossfire on them. Jason Burgess was shooting into one window, suppressing the guy that was in there while I infiltrated and shot through the other window. Had he not been been doing that, I wouldn't have been able to get an angle on them. In which case, you probably would have met more opposition inside the house, which would have been bad for you. So it all ended up working out really, really well, and I just couldn't really relay that very well in the video. But I wish I could have. No, I thought it, I thought it worked out pretty well, and I know the Wo or Michelle Wojcik was a bit off she foot. Was, yeah, definitely. Good game. The funny Good thing game. is that I think I, I may have told you this. I had a conversation with them at Lion Claw, and they were like, "Yeah, we've never really played a like an indoor like place like this where everything's confined. Like every time we were inside a house, we we're like, oh my god, let's get outside, let's get outside. <laughs> I don't feel safe, and you know, I am just the opposite. I'm like, fuck, I'm out in the open. Get let's inside, get inside, the house, let's get inside yeah. somewhere." <laughs> And so uh, it's just kind of funny how that the whole thing worked out. Yeah, that, no, that was definitely a textbook assault on that house. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Definitely aside from land call this year, I'm going to be starting to do a little bit of training, so to speak, maybe jogging with uh, maybe a backpack full of weights or something, <laughs> just to kind of simulate what that. Why don't you like. just try jogging first and then put the weights in later? Did I don't know, man. Last year was a uh, pretty rough AF for trying to get around. The engagements are so far away. Uh, up when I, when usually every other time in Monterey, I actually take my Cyrez up there and I fill it full of weights and I'll take whatever gun I'm going to use most of the time and then just go up the hill, shoot a bunch of targets, go to the end of the hill, shoot a bunch of targets, go all the way around the bottom, go back up. It's like a nerdy ass workout. That oh. is a nerdy ass workout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's actually more of a cardio workout than an ass workout, right? Well, going up that hill is definitely an ass workout. <laughs> So yeah, here we are. Yeah. 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 So what inspired Tim versus Bob? Tell him, Bob. Tell him what inspired Tim versus Bob. I think I will. 
Uh, so yeah, one day I was extraordinarily pissed off at Tim because he ditched me. Uh, we were going to go actually fight the forces uh, uh, against Airsoft that were uh, putting forward SB798. Uh, current incarnation is SB1315. We're going to go up there to represent Airsoft. And then, uh, I guess moments before uh, Tim and I were going to leave by car, uh, it was voted that he would stay and all of us, was it white people? It didn't really work out that way because Amanda didn't go. Well, everyone else who went you was... you and Jason. That and Tyler. Out. Tyler went? Did Tyler go? I don't think Tyler. so. Okay. Well, regardless, our plan, or at least... The plan I thought was... Our plan, no, no, was, was for us to drive together. About six people. It was me, Frank, CEO... Uh, Bob and Jason and another girl named Amanda. We were all gonna go up in the bus. No, 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 no. Hold on. We were all gonna go up in the bus to Sacramento to uh, protest SB seven nine eight. It was decided that Frank. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Walter no, no. You're missing I... out on this part. You're lying. What? They were gonna take the bus, and you and I were gonna take my car so we could hang out and drive on the way up together. I don't think that was ever. No, no, mentioned. that was. At, that's why I got so pissed because we talked about this because you didn't want to be on the bus to hang out with all the airsoft GI fanboys. That's what you told me. You're like, I don't want to be bothered by all these people. They're gonna blah 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 me. No, no, no. Walter was not gonna let us. You take your car. That was the thing uh -huh. because uh -huh. you, dude, you're a contractor. You can come back whenever. But I had to have been at work the next day. Well, so that's why back we, on the bus. That's why we couldn't have took, taken your car. Whatever. If it was an option to take your car, I might have gone. I think. I think you're full of it. No. That's exactly what no, happened. No, no, But anyway. Regardless, you ditched out the last minute along with some other people, but you were the important one that ditched out, and I got stuck on the bus. I, I, don't even, I didn't even sit next to Jason. I don't know where he was. No. Uh, thankfully, I got to hang out with uh, uh, the KWA guys on the bus. They were pretty fun to talk to, uh, and they also had Tron 1 and Tron 2 on the bus to watch. That was awesome. Uh, but yeah, I came back, uh, still livid. And uh, I was talking with Walter. I was like, yeah, Walter, I'm so mad at Tim for ditching me. I'm furious. And he's like, you know, you know, Bob, we got to do something about this. I think we should have a game where you, you command forces against Tim. I was like, great, I'm all in. Do whatever we have to. And that's what happened. And I got pulled into Bob versus Tim 1. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it all began. The SB798 story. The bus story. It was Walter's fault. I don't care. I'm he, gonna blame you. He I'm gonna blame you. He didn't want to go, and Frank and I knew. Frank and I were like, "Hell no! If you're not going, we're not going." And so Walter knew that if he was gonna get out of it, he had to get Frank and I out of it too. I saw. I saw the look <laughs> on his face when he was like this. Uh, all right, you guys leave the room. We're gonna take a vote on resolution one, two, three, four, five, eight. <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, this is so lame. <laughs> so lame." And yeah, we came back in and he did that whole political speech. Uh, resolution 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they passed. You guys will be going and we will be holding <laughs> we'll down the fort. We'll holding down we, will, we will go with you to the rally, but we will not be attending on the bus. I even gave a big speech at that rally, too. Ugh. I don't even remember what happened at that rally. You guys showed up after the speech. Really? You were there before us? Yeah, I was there and uh, uh, another retailer was like, Hey, Bob, can you like go up there and say something maybe? Because you're the only one here from Airsoft. I was like, yeah, I will absolutely say something. Mm -hmm. And give a big speech, and then you guys showed up. I don't like public speaking. We're in front of over 200 people right now. I don't see any people here. It's you, me, and Josh. What are you talking about? They've got three eyes. Look at them. Mm. That's different. I don't mind doing this. This is cool. It's whatever. But public speaking. Do you remember when you went to BJ's, and then someone was like, Oh, Airsoft GI Tim. And Gene was like, Whoop, you're on your own. And then <laughs> 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 Well, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually been recognized in some odd places. I was at uh, uh, J Town in LA. Yeah. And then somebody messaged me the day after I got back. It's like, Tim, were you walking around J Town with two girls? And I was like, Yeah. Ooh, what were you doing? Damn. He was like, I was following you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Really? He's like, He's like hiding around the corner, like <laughs> taking pictures on his phone. Like, yeah, oh, really. oh, look what I saw in public yesterday. Oh, yeah. Man. yeah. Hey, man. That was kind of funny. Oh shoot, I do have a fun team story to tell, but I can't remember it now. Uh, EDM N8. You've asked me this question repeatedly. I'll answer for you really quick. We do not cover our contours uh, with any sort of protection. After that. If they get hit, After we mm -hmm. try to fix them if we can, or we oh, get new ones, whatever the circumstances may be. Working but usually they don't get hit that often, working. so yeah, it's usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. So if you're really worried about it getting broken, um, I don't know, put some Lexan or whatever you want to put on in front of it, but really it's very small area so why doesn't why doesn't airsoft gi carry emerson fast helmets 
I'm waiting for you to answer, Tim. I don't know. I'm not a purchaser. Oh, really? I thought you wouldn't understand that. Emerson Fast Helmets? Mm-hmm. I do know that we did have a number of helmets in, but right as they came into the warehouse, they, they were sold immediately. immediately. Yeah. yeah, I remember telling the purchasers, like, you guys got to buy more of this stuff than just, like, they set can't. and set them out. The distributors sold out of them, too. But, I, no, no, that sucks. They're being sold faster than they can be made. Damn. Mm-hmm. Next, I want one. I need to get one. Mm-hmm. 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 Bravo PJ helmets. Yeah, Those are the ones the, that sold out really fast. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know why everybody likes to wear helmets so much. I really don't get the idea. I don't like the helmet thing either. I, I used to wear helmets quite a bit. I know the helmet thing is very Milson. Like the it's military, cool. It's military cool. was helmet. Yeah, it looks cool. It's cool if you have everything else that goes with it, but if you just yeah. put a helmet on without any of the attachments, then it's kind of not as cool. I don't know. For me, sorry, for me playing in California, I just feel like it's so hot, I really don't want to put anything more on top of my head than I necessarily need to. Yeah. A baseball cap is one layer pretty is much enough. all. Yeah, yeah, I really don't want to get too hot when wearing one of those. Um, I gotta answer this question. I gotta mention something about the helmets. Um, shoot, what the hell was that question? <laughs> God, I got just got strung up on that. Yeah, darn it. Oh well. Um, do you remember when we were at uh, Irene and John Lou mentioned about how we should read the warrant orders? Okay, I'm gonna just re up this for you. Um, he was like, I hope you guys read the the instruction manual because there's a lot of stuff in there you should know. And then after it, he was like, okay, so hope you guys are wearing baseball caps or aware that like some of these explosions actually have rocks in them because that's what the Rangers and Seals requested. So probably shouldn't wear baseball caps next year. And you looked over at me and you're like, oh, man, I probably will read the instruction manual next time. I don't remember that. Oh, my God. I do remember us being at Irene breaking down our gear. Not at Irene, but in our hotel breaking down our stuff. And then somebody had a question that I was like, I don't know, it's probably in the one order. And then it became apparent at that time that nobody in the room had yeah. the Warner. <laughs> Did you read the Warner? No, you? No. I actually, I, it's funny to talk about this, because last night I was actually on the, uh, the Lion Claw Warner note, and I was reading over it just to see what stuff was going on. Mm -hmm. This year being the 20th anniversary, the uh, Bravo team is uh, going to dress as the Somalian pirates slash skinnies. Uh, so they're encouraged to wear, you know, like crazy uniforms with uh, Adidas, you know, life jackets, all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't stuff. think they're pirates. Uh, well, I don't know what they are. I just you know I saw that South Park episode and I'm referencing that. Those were pirates. Those were definitively pirates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they have to wear a bunch of crazy outfits, no, not a lot of tactical gear, so it should be a very interesting gameplay to see how that mm -hmm. all works out. So. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Someone's That's asking good. us to come play Northern California. I would really like to go play at Fort Ord. I hear that's a really good place to, uh, to airsoft. There's a cup there, isn't there? Is uh, Fort Ord that place on the way to your house in Monterey? Uh, yeah, that is uh, the old army barracks uh, that used to be like a functional base. I don't mm -hmm. believe it is anymore, but um, yeah, they, they've had ops there before. They also have a game every now and again. Uh, it's a pretty cool facility, so. And, you know, I, there is like some airsoft in Northern California, but it's not like it is down here in SoCal, so. They've got that CQB City up there that looks really cool. CQB City looks pretty awesome. You know some junkie does a lot of videos. Arwen! Mm -hmm. I, I met him at a media airsoft day. Videos. I've never, I feel like I should be, but I'm not really in tune with the Airsoft online community. No. A lot of guys said, what's up, at uh, SHOT Show. I was like, hey, remind me of your name again, because I don't remember. Tim, you just, you just look down real quick. Look down. I know, no, no, no. It, it was good at SHOT Show, because everybody has, everybody has uh, name tags on, but Arwin, Milsim Junkie, I, I don't know what he looks like, so if I ever ran into him that wasn't at SHOT Show, I probably would embarrass myself pretty mm -hmm. badly. Well, I think I'd, I'd actually, I'd, I was lucky, I'd actually recently seen a video with, I think, him and Greg Wong, or something Greg Wong recommended, so. Mm -hmm. Greg Wong's about the only other guy I know. Mm -hmm. He's very easily identifiable. Yes. He's a very skinny Asian boy. I'm just going <laughs> to let that sit there. <laughs> well, awkward. dude, I was, I'm pretty uh, sure he's a man. He's, he's kind of a, he's in the army. But he's so I mean, small. Yeah, but that was close call. No, he's very small. Using the word boy. For yeah, who else is yeah, small? He's, he's, he's not a boy. Doesn't really equate. Mill spec monkey is freaking small. He is a short man. Yes. Did you see the photo of him next to Tom Tominator Harris? Yeah, from... Tom's a tall dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Tom's a very tall guy. When really Tom, nice guy though. Tom, when Tom was doing the interview, uh, he was talking to I think it, who was the guy for PTS this year for Shot Show? Alex. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Cole. He was talking to Alex. Alex. 
and I was talking to the camera guy off, off screen, being a little bit nerdy, and I was like, man, the frame must suck, because Tom is really tall, Alex, and so not like, so tall, so shit, the camera is just way far back, so. Didn't the camera guy, like, yeah, it's a bit He's like, he's like, yeah, it's a little much, so. Little yeah, I sat across Tom all, like, all week at SHOT Show, so we, we chit-chatted, he's a really cool guy, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. See. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's fun. But, uh. About that time. Um, so it's about that time. So it is seven o'clock. We have been on for an about hour. an hour and a half, including the pre-show nonsense. Um, obviously, all of you guys are here, but if any of your buddies are wondering what's on the live show tonight, you can tell them to check out our YouTube page very, very soon because we'll have this uploaded in due time. Thanks for joining us for our live show. Catches again in two days on Thursday, and, not really Thursday night, Thursday afternoon between four thirty and five thirty. PM Pacific Standard Time. I'll try to update our schedule below so that reflects. Like subscribers we have really quick. We have thirteen ten. Getting close. Ooh, damn. Very good. Thirteen ten. So we'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Bye now. Bye bye. 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 For a long How do you hold your controller? Um. Well, you know, I usually play with the mouse and keyboard, so <laughs> that extra hand really comes in handy, so. You can use pistols, first person, shit, never mind. You know, but it, it's because I'm playing Duck Hunt, obviously, Tim. Duck Hunt? It's a first person shooter. Yeah, it's a first person. Actually, it's a third person, first person shooter, because you're the third person shooting exactly. as a first person. It's like the fourth dimension. I know, man. It's crazy. Someone spotted the 226. So are you guys going to make an airsoft? Oh my god, it's a little cold in here. Airsoft honey badger? Probably not. It's pretty difficult to make. You'd have to get some uh, pretty proprietary parts to fit together. But if you have a machining degree and a lot of time and metal on your hands, you can totally make one. There's degrees for machining? I'm pretty sure you can get a degree in machine. I guess if you can get a degree in theater, you should be able to get a degree in machining. <laughs> yes. If you can get a degree on how to make coffee, you can actually get one. Uh, you should definitely be able to get a degree on how to work. Tim threw the ball at Bob. I will throw the ball at him. You can't throw the ball at somebody. You could have thrown the ball at I him. I can throw the ball at him, but threw it at him. Tim, did you watch the Super Bowl? Did I watch the Super Bowl? No, I didn't watch the Super Bowl. I did, and it was good. I'm happy that the Ravens won. They I saw the good. last half of it. It was a good. It was a really good game. I thoroughly enjoyed it. We're yeah. not grammar Nazis. It's it's actually just the way you're supposed to speak. It's called normal. It's Speaking. called English. Yeah. English, mother... Do you speak it? <laughs> <laughs> Say what again? Say what one more time? <laughs> I'm really happy that Ray Lewis got his ring before he pieced out, so... It was a good year for him. I had a feeling he was going to take it this year. The team I'm watch the World good. Cup next year. Probably not. The World Cup? Oh, I'm man. not a huge football fan. Oh, man. Football. So Football good. is big in Josh's country. It thoroughly is. Did you lock the door? I'm talk with M1. Oh yeah, bring the M1 Garand in here. Go get that, go get that, yeah. Uh, do you guys play World of Tanks? We don't. Nope. Mm -hmm. I do play a Battle 3 though recently. I started getting into that. It's really fun when you have a good team. I dare you, I double day. <laughs> the M1 Garand. It's pretty sweet. I don't know, I'm not, I can't really get into like World War II guns. It's not my thing, man. I don't know. I don't really like World War II guns either. But do. Take it out of the box, please, Mark. We could make the HMR. Uh, oh. It'd be kind of difficult, but we could work on it. What's the HMR? Hammer. It's, it's a gun. Hammer? Hammer. Like H-A-M-R. Similar. Similar, right? Why, do you have, why don't you have a ball, Chase? Hmm? Hmm? I thought about that. Maybe you should get one of these balls. Mm -hmm. No, actually, this, this ball is really cool. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever been to the Google campus, but Google is a super cool Omega post. Airsoft, if you post that again, I'm going to ban you. What we don't do it? donations here, man. Ooh. Um, no, just set that off to the side. Just I, I didn't say kick, I said ban. Yes, the ban. The ban hammer. It's fine if it's for Chris Kyle, but post it somewhere else. So Google is a really cool place to work. They have little bicycles that are colored like green and yellow. And they ride around and red. Right. Yeah, because like, huh? it's so big. Google yeah, Google, like their, their campus ranges like numerous city blocks. And uh, we were invited to Google to do some sort of YouTube advertising summit type of thing. So that's where we got this Google ball from. 
Indeed. Google Balls are off. Scoot over a bit. The Google Balls. Chris, hey, Christian everybody. Estrella 5680. Wow, your stream is way better. The quality is significantly improved in the stream. It does look quite crisp. I will say that. I think, don't quote me on this, but I don't think, think Blog TV is based in Israel. Israel. So our viewers who are in America are seeing an image that is being recorded here in California, sent to Israel, and then back to America. So that could have something to do with the quality. The chili, yeah. Do you ever Google your Google balls? No. If you Google, dude, if you Googled, Google Ball right now? I wonder if a picture of us would show up. What is the this Google Ball? Time space continuum would collapse. Is Google that fast? Can they do it? I got a fun story about this ball. What is it? Uh, there was one time we were playing around at the office, and uh, I think you'd already left, and the ball bounced outside, and uh, Josh went out to get it, and I kind of stared him down for a second. There was just a quick little. There, there was a little like. A, a couple beats. Like, You're yeah. behind it, and I was like. Oh, he's going to kick that at me, and I ran inside, and I was trying to close the door as fast as I could, and it hit the wall and bounced up and hit me in the face. And it was <laughs> let, wet. Let me just, it was wet with the water on the ground. Let me just clarify this. The ball had rolled into the water, and I was like, oh, man, how am I going to get this ball out of the water? It's all dirty. I don't want to pick it up. And I just, I was already in a kicking stance, and I just, I, 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 I me like, and Bob's eyes locked, and I was just uh, like, <laughs> I just made a run you know, the it. whistling noise came on for the, the draw, you know, <laughs> And I was just like, I'm doing this. And Bob ran and I just kicked it. And it was like, I was like perfectly off the wall. The door was the open this much and went right <laughs> through it. And, and Andrew is standing right, right the there. Face. I completely missed him. He's outside. Yeah. He's like, oh, damn. <laughs> Hit him right in the face. <laughs> Quite awesome. I was hoping we had that on uh, the security camera because that would have looked amazing. Huh. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Well, nothing else is ever going to be as exciting as that story. So it's not true. Well, I mean, immediately right now, we're in a lull because that story was so oh. exciting. I was actually uh, on the, the article. The Arnold Schwarzenegger. Please. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Remember when we saw him? What was that, Bob? Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know. That was like a very so effeminate this Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is your government. <laughs> I can't do it right now. We should have my cool maid Stamos for the sex scene. What sex scene? It's new. I just added it right now. Carla. <laughs> Do you remember when we saw him uh, up uh, at the He's concourse? He's short. He's very short. Extremely short. Yeah. Arnold is so short. Yeah. Ridiculous. Someone posted, do you even lift? And my response is, when I'm cooking, do you even sift? Do you sift? Dost, Dost thou hoist? Do Dost thou even hoist? Dost thou even hoist? Eat my sushi. Come towards me, brethren. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I guess we could like, start the show. Aw, leave a 42. Mm -hmm. still have time to. Is the show starting again? We need, to, we need to garner more followers. There's only 100, 100 people watching this. Garner. Everybody go get your no, friends. No, no, no. It's 100? split between two different streams. Yeah. How can you tell how many are in Ustream? Mm, 52. So there's 150, 60 people watching this. It's pretty boy. Team now. DTF. Whoa. Is downtown Fullerton. Down to eat your sushi. It's downtown Fullerton, Bob. Down to I want that shirt. It's the one that I put over there. Oh, well, damn it. Well, somebody put that chair here where I was going to sit. I'm not an idiot, so I could have moved it. There was a broken chair. Well, great. Well, I can yeah. see that it's broken. Yeah. So there was another time when I was in here, uh, <coughs> and I guess he'd set the chair here so that I would sit on it, and when you lean back at a certain point, it just comes off. And had I done that, like just lean back as far as I normally do, I would have just fallen off the back of the chair, hit this thing, and everything would have come crashing down. That's why I decided not to do it, because if you look behind you, there's about $400 Kino on the floor uh, with light bulbs in the full side of it. See, I was thinking about like if one of those hits my head, it's going to be a Oh, your personal issue. safety is not at all my concern. What I'm saying is those lights are very expensive, Bob. Yeah. We can't. The lights are expensive to replace. You Ugh. will work on it. You, you will heal, Bob. <laughs> yeah. I apparently the lights will be broken. I heal pretty fast, You're young, considering. Yeah. What do you guys think about digital camo? Do you like it? Hate it? Do you like other camo schemes more? Digital I'm not camo. a huge camouflage person. I like solid colors. Um, I really like camouflage. Um, what, what were the specifics that they were asking? I didn't understand. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you like other camo schemes more? I, uh, which camera are they talking about though? I didn't see. Tim camo. likes multi -cam. Digital, digital camo schemes. Um, I really I, like multicam. I just happened to wear it at TVB3 because it was available. I saw the new No, you, I thought you were wearing, weren't you wearing, um... I was wearing multicam. Weren't you wearing a green Marpat for one of them, though? TVB? Yeah, I thought you were wearing green Marpat for one of the TVBs. 
I don't have any more. Ghost Fairy. I will try to tell wear Marpet Twitch, ever but, uh, again. Didn't Why? Like I wore Marpet for um, Operation New Horizon two or three years ago, and Gene and I were driving back home, got lost somewhere, stopped to ask some CHP officer where to go. He happens to be a Marine. Fucking yells at me for yeah. wearing Marp hat and not being a Marine. I was like, God damn, I knew I shouldn't have worn this shirt. <laughs> well, you know, I, I guess because I, I was in the morning when I was getting ready for the game, I was like, Oh man, some Marine is gonna get really mad at me for wearing Marp hat and not being a Marine. <laughs> I, I totally said it to myself in the morning, and then lo and behold, later on in the day, the CHP officer Marine chews me out for wearing Marp hat and not being a Marine. Like, man, I know. did he give you a call. ticket? No, he didn't give me a ticket, but he just reluctantly told me where to go. Wow. <laughs> reluctantly told you. Yeah, I've, I've actually heard, uh, right over here. I think uh, <laughs> one of our friends who's a Marine told me that uh, um, they're not supposed to wear their digis off base, and when they do, it's usually in case there's an imminent emergency yeah. in the area. So if, if you see a Marine wearing that, there's imminent danger. Like, you're about to get evacuated or something is going, there's imminent danger of presence. So. Or perhaps it's Halloween and you're on Hollywood Boulevard and people are walking around in that outfit. Remember we saw those guys when yeah. we were down there? Yeah. How ridiculous was that? Yeah, it was absurd. Or you can be on recruiting detail, I think. If you're a yes, yes, assistant. that is correct. That is you correct. You can wear your Marpet out in public. Yes. I do like uh, my favorite camera right now is, are the ATAX, uh, the AU and the Folge Green. Yes. Those are pretty awesome. Yes. Especially, even though I keep saying it, is because they resemble the camouflage of Rebels War in Star Trek VI: Return of the Jedi. Star Trek VI, for sure. Mm -hmm. Did nobody else catch that? Nobody else caught the, uh, the total huh? Star Trek versus you said Star Trek, not Star Trek. Did I say oh, Star, Trek? Said Star Trek? Oh, that's oh. embarrassing! Oh, damn! Oh, you said Star Trek! That, that is embarrassing. Oh, Bassmaster! Bassmaster. Is it Bassmaster or yeah. Bassmaster? He's the guy who played the opening for uh, Seinfeld. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was an epic fail. Good <laughs> lord. That is embarrassing. I said it. I, I, said, I repeated what you said, and you guys started to be like, I didn't. I, I didn't just did, it. Yeah, it didn't click. So. <laughs> I didn't catch it. In that same vein, though, the new Star Trek movie looks really cool. I would agree. It looks pretty neat. I have some inside information about that I'm not supposed to say, so I won't. Uh, Blazing Hog, that rail is a prototype rail that we might be doing. One of these days, we might take pictures up and put it on Facebook in a poll, but so far, we have not. What are these doing here? Uh, we're going to be comparing high-end pistols versus low-end pistols. Team DTF, if you tell me to eat your sushi again, I'm going to tell Andrew to kick you out. He so, it. <clears throat> yeah, really so we have the new Pistola by VFC. We're going to be comparing it with some of the other guns that, you know, Tokyo Marui makes high-quality pistols. KWA makes high-quality pistols. WE, KJW make budget-minded pistols, and so we're just going to be kind of comparing and contrasting the two. See? Yeah. JTV fan, you said you were going to mention it once, you mentioned it three times. I gave you the opportunity. I don't want to have to keep kicking you for the same thing, so just refrain yourself, please. He also has his hat on, so. Yeah, what happened? Uh, what? What happened? Huh? I don't know what's going on. Alright. Moving on. Battle of LA is an awesome movie. Good choice. Battle what? I think that's my favorite war film. Battle La. Battle of LA? That was your favorite war film? It's my favorite war film based on real life. Yes. You haven't seen Band of Brothers yet. It can't be that good. It can't be as good as Battle of LA. How can it be better than Battle of LA? It's a ten-parter. It's ten hours it's of awesome. Well, there's some episodes that are great. You've seen Band of Brothers, right? Nope. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I've seen. I've seen. I'm not somebody. The, I'm not really somebody always shows me before. the Battle of Bastogne or the Battle after Bastogne or something like that, and so I've seen that episode. I haven't seen the rest of them. I'm not it. saying they're not good films. I'm sure they are. I just ten hours is a long time to commit to watching stuff about that's war and things that happened a long time ago. You know. I mean, it's the so Grok really cool stuff. But. Is here. I'll, I'll look into it. I'll you know, I was looking at mine last night. I should have brought mine in, but yours looks a little bit cooler than mine. See so you have that silver slide. Man, my gun looks better. No, that's the whole reason. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. I don't know. I didn't watch the entirety of the Pacific, which you guys probably haven't seen either. It's the, oh, oh my yeah. God. What a great series that was. You're full of it. <laughs> you are full of it. No, I actually got turned off because Tom Hanks said some really anti-World War II stuff right before he aired the series. I was like, well, that's stupid. Really? Yeah. Like, World War II never happened? Uh, 
well, no, he just said all these things like, oh, the reasons we got into war with the Japanese because, you know, we were just, we were bound to fight. We just didn't understand each other. <laughs> well, maybe Pearl Harbor had something to do with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't could know. Have been, yeah, could have been, could have been that sneak attack thing. That's a big misunderstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I ran into Tom Hanks and his son Colin uh, at uh, the local grocery store about two weeks ago. Oh, yeah? Colin Hanks? Yeah, I've met Colin Hanks before. He went to my school. Louisville, Maryland? Yeah. Were you aware that George Lucas' daughter is an MMA fighter? And she's actually what? really good, and she is. She looks like a Neanderthal woman. She's Can I say it? <laughs> she, no, she is, she is probably, she's probably about the same height as Vince and half the weight. She's a big but girl. Vince is... No, Vincent Valderis. Oh, Vincent wow, wow. I was like, how Vincent is that a little Korean she's guy? A, she's yeah. Vincent she's Valderis is big Mexican. <laughs> yeah, she, she's, she's a very large That's a woman. big difference. Yeah. yeah. Wow. She, she's, she's a big chick. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I saw it recently that she she Man wants to Bob's. pursue fighting, nice. so that's what she's doing. She got her brother's abbreviation is Bob. Oh, wow. It is. Sudden Why did I ever catch on to that? Ah. Just like that other thing that Ross made us aware of that I can't believe that I never caught on to. What? Yeah. You know now, right? No. No. Oh. Bob, you know. We talked about we this. We talked about this. How we, how we didn't this. see this. You got in trouble for mentioning this on the live stream previously. I don't think you remember it. Currently. We were going to do a video about, oh, people, nobody pays attention to me. People running out of oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't know why I didn't see that. It's uh, plain as day right in front of me. Yeah, that was, I got to give it to Ross for coming up with that. That was pretty brilliant. Yeah. Oh, Kellen built, Kellen built your LM4? He's a really good tech. He does cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I like that guy. He's from Hawaii. Hawaii. Me and him listen to similar music tastes, and he is rather a cool Hawaiian gentleman. Music? Uh, Come on, Pepper. Don't necessarily listen to Hawaiian music. Mm. You guys ever heard Pepper? Pepper? They're like uh, Salt and pepper a shoot. Hawaiian version of Sublime. Hawaiian. Well, they're Hawaiian and they play songs that sound like Sublime, but they're really good. Are you sure it wasn't Sublime? Yeah. Sublime is back these days. With their uh, Rome dude? That Rome dude sounds a lot like the original he, dude. You should not ever say those words in those I think he sounds very similar. I was listening to my Sublime album the other day. <coughs> the other dude sounds like Wait, wait, you listen to something other than Tool? Other than Tool? Yeah, yeah, I'm shocked. No, I have, I have that Sublime self-titled album. The one with the freaking tattoo on the back. <laughs> Did you just break that gun? No. That's how you take off the back uh, We have not chosen a mystery gas gun yet, but we have 200 people left to figure out who it's going to be. But, um, yeah, at the time being, we don't know yet. It's going to be a mystery. I, even I don't know, and I'm being honest with you. Yeah, no, right. I would never mystery. lie. I would never just go on the internet and tell lies. Jeez. Who would do something like that? Don't lies on the internet. <laughs> LZ Tango 316. Thanks for your support, dude. All right, Sam, here you go. You have to be any character from the X-Men series. Who do you pick? Same question for Bob. You already asked any me Any character I in X-Men? Wolverine, duh. He's the coolest character there is. Amateur, clearly. Wolverine. Does. Bob? Now, after talking to you, Josh, I'm kind of tempted to choose Deadpool, but just oh. because I've been such a huge fan of this character from the beginning of the series ever since I just like Cyclops. What about Nightcrawler? Oh yeah, no, I tell you right. I, 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 I would choose my Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler is a complete that, badass. That's Plus, that's the, the it would be really cool to be Phoenix okay. too. Let's, Phoenix has mm. some pretty cool stuff, but yeah, you can't be Deadpool. Deadpool is the best X Men character ever, ever. Yeah, what she told me more about it was I'm like I'm not really oh. into X Men, so that's really a hard Dread. for me to answer. Yes, Dread's cool, dude. I watched that movie again last night. Game One Grand's right here. I'm actually holding on to it because it's made of a lot of wood, and I like holding on to wood. It's my wood though. I own it. It's in my hands. <laughs> We're 45 miles away from West Hollywood. Hey, man, it's only a 20 minute car. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really. I'm not, I never really got into the X Men thing. X Men? Really? This is I, I know about X Men. Oh, you know what character I liked a lot when I was a kid? Gambit. He was cool. He's pretty cool. Hey, Ga Gambit's a pretty popular character. He was underrepresented in the last X Men. Movie. He was horrible. Yeah, the, the character they got to play him, the actor, I should say, did a pretty good job. But they did a horrible job with him in general. Yeah. So. Gambit was cool. I uh, I wish they'd done a better job. Um, did any of you guys see the animated video we put out not too long ago? The uh, Airsoft GI animated video? Because we were caught the in the TVB one through three recap. Did you guys recap. like it? Because I want to hear your, recap. your, uh, your things. Did you guys enjoy it? Because we put did a lot of work Share in it on your Facebooks. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Do that oh so more people can watch it. 
Cool. Wow. A lot of people seem to have liked that video a lot. Very good. It took our graphics department quite a while to like come up with that. I mean, it yeah. was still, those were not easy photos to engineer. Yeah. Photos. Well, Tim, if, if, I'm a, if I'm holding wood, you're holding balls. So. I've got nothing. Together, we can get the airsoft show done. <laughs> <laughs> we are on the right track. <laughs> Full metal, real wood, and red balls. balls. Red <laughs> balls. Red balls. Too bad Google doesn't have any blue in their colors. They're yeah, really blue balls. Cool. Yeah, the, uh, the, the video was really fun. Liked the, uh, Gotta relax a little bit, Bob. Mm. Oh, that was definitely a cool video. It took about two or three weeks, I think. It I was originally. a lot of work. Yeah, I, did the, I didn't. I did hardly any work for that project. All the other guys did a ton of work. Yeah. Uh, I basically came in, did two scenes, did a voiceover, and that was pretty much it. So. Uh, I think you guys are forgetting. I supervised the hell out of that. Yeah, because you stood here. And yeah, I know. <laughs> Josh, I, I really supervised it. This, Bob. <laughs> this is this is what Bob was like. This is what you should do, Josh. Do the accent for the. Oh shoot! What was the line? It helps uh, to have a line. Oh. Uh, what side were you? What side will you be on? <laughs> that, that's Bob's. She's Jim and yeah. Bob. <laughs> that, that was Bob's guidance. He was I, like, yeah, be English, Josh. I was like, okay, that's not hard. And he was like, well, do it kind of like this, though. No, I didn't actually I didn't actually suggest that. I was just showing you that voice. But I actually got a... What side will you be on? What side will you be on? Uh, I, got a, I got an IM from uh, uh, Harrison. He's like, man, I just listened to an animated video, or watched an animated video, and Josh sounds like some of those like Warhammer 40K audio books. And I was like, oh, Harrison, I had him listen to one to prep him for how to do it. It was. Nice. It was. It was. Yeah. It helps a little bit. Pillars of fire. I'm still no uh, no voice no voice actor though. I'll say that. So the show it's, starts at six o'clock. If you were currently unaware, you should go watch the video on YouTube explaining what time our show starts. Yeah. Well, we did get on here a bit early, so we yeah, we're a little bit early. We always have the pre-show nonsense. Not Indeed. always, but most of the time. We should have a halftime show, and it should be like a single competition, and this one should be dodgeball. And the loser gets to shoot the other person with this ICS M1 Grand. No. I don't know how that's going to work. I thought you were going to say we should ball. have a halftime show with a wardrobe malfunction. That would make a lot more sense. I call well, it. we got the wood and the ball, so wardrobe malfunction will be right, yeah, on, we'll par be right on par. Right on par, yeah. So I guess Bob's got to cover that one. So can, we have, can we have, like, half the power go out? Or? Oh, man, that'd be so easy to do. Yeah. I can just kill, just kill one key <laughs> 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 I got to do it. <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Hold on. Are you killing one key Hold on. Super oh, Bowl. All right. Welcome to the Super Bowl, uh, guys. Super Bowl <laughs> Time edition. Out. Thirty minute break. Uh, Beyonce is practicing her set. Super Bowl edition. Have the lights go out. Bane's fault. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I wanted so bad to hear. Both of them I'm here. The reckoning is upon you. <laughs> I actually didn't see the halftime show. I didn't. Yeah, we were playing Battlefield Three. Right? Oh yeah, we were playing Battlefield Three. Totally worth it. Uh yes, I can do that, Andrew. Just give me Uno Momento. Where's it going? Merc of the Gameth. Ryan Scotticus says hello, Bob. He said that many times earlier. Oh, hey, Ryan Scotticus. Hey, Tim, what was my first car? It was an Acura Integra. BF3 rules. I will not disagree with you. What you which, which one are you reading? I'm just, I'm you streaming it because we always pay so much attention to the blog TV. That's true. I don't want the you streamers to feel left out. Yeah. Ryan Scotticus says hey, Bob, yes. Yeah. We get a lot of questions. When are we going to start painting guns? Yeah. yeah. Hopefully soon. I mean, <laughs> Hopefully soon. Hopefully. As um, soon as. I kicked oh. Mark because people made an account that is not the real Airsoft Mark, so please don't try to replicate our accounts because it is confusing for other people and I don't want to have to deal with it, so let's just not do that. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What was my first airsoft, or Bob, what was your first airsoft gun? It was actually that gun, it, without the silver slide, I had a uh, KSC G18C. Odd that we both had the same first gun. Aiden Singh loves the uncut video where I scare the shit out of you. You really got me good on that one. <laughs> oh look, a bar of soap. <laughs> Bob is a Battlefield 3 team killer. I... Uh, recently I have had some <laughs> recently, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kill some people. Well, it's the, the hardcore servers I wasn't used to. Dude, so. That's all you gotta play, man. Hardcore yeah, no, it's, it's, I will give it to you. It's pretty fun. So. Admin worst you. worst okay. airsoft moment from Devil Dog 23. Oh, that guy's know. a Marine. We're just talking about Marines over here. Worst airsoft moment. Um, oh, man, it's kind of tough. 
Bob, how many times do you throw up? I, I don't consider those worse or seven moves. I consider those enjoy memorable. Throwing up. Yeah, I don't enjoy shot, throwing up, but I like the fact that I can. Up. I like the fact that I can puke and then still play the whole rest of the day after that. Um, I would say the worst air stuff moment I think was at Storm the Midwest when I, it was like after you had already pieced out and we were just kind of hanging out in the area and I was still playing. Um, this this creek was just the bane of my existence where I would try and cross it and then I fell into it and then I tried to get up this hill and then I fell off the hill into the creek and then I fell a third time and I almost broke my foot but at the same time of almost breaking my foot I also lost one of my uh, KWA 1911 mags. So that was frustrating because I hurt my foot, which sucked, but I didn't realize I lost the mag until later, which was unfortunate. But that's not that bad considering all the bad moments I could have had. Like, I remember at a certain airsoft milsim operation, I was jumping over what I thought was a pit of trash, but it was actually a pit of broken glass. And had I jumped a little bit less, I might have landed in the middle of it, and I had, had I not been wearing boots, that would have been a really crappy situation. Uh, I would figure your worst airsoft moment would be getting shot in the face. That might be the worst. I don't really have a lot of bad air self moments. I can't even think of any off the top of my head. God, I remember. I didn't remember that until you told me about it just right now. Well, I remember like throwing D Day out of the way trying to get you. I was like, Are you okay? Because yeah, it didn't look happy. It's kind of humorous. It was humorous, I think, after the fact. In the face. Yeah. Blake, you shot me in the face! Hmm. I think that's what he said.